that this weekend, the Super Mario Brothers, and you know, infringement and copyright and all that kind of stuff, that's a big deal to the Motion Picture Association. Well, the entirety, according to a report in Deadline, of the Super Mario Brothers movie got uploaded to Twitter. Jeez. And not only was up on Twitter, but was there for hours. Oh. That accumulated, how many did it say it got? Oh, let me, 9 million views. 9 million people were able to watch it on Twitter, according to this report. That's more than Black Adam. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get tired. It exceeded the Black Adam mark. Nine million people were able to watch it. And now, of course, uh, this all came about because uh, there's the new blue, blue check mark system, right? If you pay, by the way, I lost mine. I mean, but some people have them still. It's a whole nightmare. Yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. But I don't understand. The it. big D Day came and, yeah. and, and my blue escape. check mark got taken. It's okay. I've used. I think I put up a post about Joyride on Twitter the other day. It's the first, and I realized it's the first time I opened Twitter in about a month and a half. Oh, nice. So, but whatever. I need to delete it. But I, I but I realized, oh, my blue check mark is done because you got to pay for it now. You got to pay for it. And if you pay for it, you are allowed to upload long videos yeah. up to 60 minutes. Oh. So they were able to take the, the, uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie and put it up in two parts and stayed up for hours enough that 9 million people were able to watch it, according to the report. Now, this has caught the attention of the MPA for obvious reasons and the studios. And even in their breakdown, the reasons that this was able to happen was not just because people with their paid for blue check marks are able to upload videos up to an hour long, thus put up entire movies in like two, maybe three parts. But according to Deadline and some other outlets, the actual root cause for this being able to happen and why this is now becoming a big concern for the MPA actually goes back several months when, when Elon Musk took over Twitter. Because one of the first thing Elon Musk did when he took over Twitter, and by the way, I, I happen to be, I happen to count myself as a little bit of an Elon Musk fan. Yeah. I drive a couple of his cars. I love his cars. He's one of the first prominent voices in the world to really come out and address and talk about climate change and take it very seriously and trying to do things to change things about climate change. There are a lot of things I really like about Elon Musk. So let's just be clear. I'm no Elon Musk hater. But one of the first things that he did when he took over Twitter was he totally gutted their, moderated, their moderation system. Totally gutted it. Uh, this comes to us from uh, the report on Deadline said this, even before Twitter cut some 4,000... 400 contract workers on November 12th, the platform was showing signs of strain. After Elon Musk bought the company and laid off 7,500 full-time employees, disinformation researchers and activists say that the team that took down toxic and fake content and any other content that required moderation, by the way, the team that would look after that vanished. Now, after years of developing relationships with these teams, research, researchers say that no one is responding to the reports of disinformation on the site, even as data suggests that Twitter is becoming an even more to toxic place. Basically speaking, the fail-safes that used to be in place and why places like the MPA, the Motion Picture Association, and others never really looked at Twitter as a potential danger spot was because they had a robust... They still needed more, but... Compared to a lot of social media platforms, Twitter had a robust moderation team that could monitor and address situations like this Super Mario Brothers situation very quickly should it arise. Now, it needs to be said in fairness that eventually the movie did get taken down, but again, not until it was already up for hours. Previously, it would have been up for a matter of minutes. It would have been up for a matter of minutes because they had a team, but they literally got rid of the team to look after this stuff. And so now with this happening, I was talking to somebody this morning that said the MPAA is now, is now taking a very serious hard look at Twitter and is thinking about flexing some legal muscles to say, you either implement, a, again, a robust moderation system in your, in your place there, or we might start looking at bringing, you know, some legal issues at you. I get whether they do or not, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure. If that, I don't know if that's going to happen for a fact. But you know they got to be taking this seriously because this would not have happened before. And all of a sudden, Twitter, which was not a place that you consider as a prime breeding ground for content or copyright infringement, 
is now maybe becoming the the premier place. Anyway, Chris, you saw this story. Uh, for what do you think about it being on Twitter? Would you watch a movie on Twitter? I'm not sure I would, but it got nine this million views. sounds horrible to just be like. <laughs> What's your takeaway from this story? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. You <laughs> fired a whole compliance team, bud. <laughs> this is going to happen. And this wasn't even the first time this happened. Over the weekend, too, the entirety of Avatar The Way of Water was up on Twitter. Oh, wow. So these things keep happening because, shocker, the people who are supposed to be looking out for this aren't there. So, I mean, obviously, I don't condone people doing this. I think that piracy is a huge issue. I don't think that you should just be streaming movies like this. That being said, if you don't have those checkpoints in place, things like this are going to happen and are going to continue to happen. So this account got suspended for copyright strike issues. Okay. They can make another account. Other people can do this, too. How are they going to stop this moving forward? They're going to have to hire a compliance team. Shouldn't have hired them, fired them in the first place. You know, you can bring up the argument. And I've heard this brought up already, and it's valid. It's that, well, come on, let's not pretend like Twitter's the only place that this is a problem. Well, of course. It's absolutely not. YouTube is far worse. The difference is, is that YouTube is a video platform, and it has it has been the place for it, and they're the ones who are trying to work on all kinds of stuff. The reason why this is a big deal is because Twitter was never looked at as one of those places. It was always kind of considered a little bit of a safer spot that you don't have to worry about a lot of, a lot at any rate, of copyright infringement going up there. And again, let's not pretend this is new. Other people have uploaded stuff to Twitter before and all that kind of stuff. Yes, but it's now becoming a big issue for them. It's now going to become a big issue for um, uh, for the MPA, for their member mm -hmm. studios. And here's hoping that, and again, we're not even talking about the social toxicness of Twitter. We're talking specifically about now copyright infringement, which was never a problem there before. No. So I don't know. Question is for you guys. What do you think is going to happen here? Apparently Mario Brothers was up there for hours, got 9 million views, something that probably couldn't have happened before, but given the circumstances now, it's not all that hard. What do you think should be done about it? Do you think anything should be done about it? Whatever you guys think, jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Today's episode of The John Campy Show is brought to you by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Guys, more and more, we enjoy shopping online, whether it's on our phones or our computers. And how many times have you gotten to the checkout and seen that promo code box and thought, man, if I only had a promo code, I could save some money. Well, thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. So here's the situation. You're shopping online on one of your favorite sites. And when you go to checkout, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Then just wait a few seconds as Honey works its magic and searches for coupons it can find for that site that you're on. And if Honey finds working coupon, just watch the price drop. Recently, Ann and I were hanging out at home one evening and we decided to order in and the Honey button appeared. I was able to apply coupon and I actually saved like six or seven bucks. It was that easy to use. And Honey doesn't just work on your desktop computer. It also works on your iPhone. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash campia. That's joinhoney.com slash campia.